Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of In The Booth. Super excited to have you guys with us again. Please like and subscribe. Really, really help us out as we grow this YouTube channel. Moving on from that though, we're uh, really excited of the two cars that I have behind me. I uh, have my counterpart here at FAF Reserve headquarters here in Toronto with me today as well to go over these two exemplary builds that we've just finished. Um, you know, before we really get into it, I really want to talk about my love affair for the 964. Um, you know, basically since it was introduced in the late 80s, taking over from the G body with its clean bumper lines, finally had a high mounted shifter, you know, you know, taking it, taking it from the 959 basically and a lot of 959 traits in the interior and the all wheel drive system that was uh, first incepted on the, on the C4, the first four wheel drive Porsche. Um, you know, very, very, very cool stuff. So as the years have gone by, you know what I mean? Through FAF tuning, we were able to um, uh, build a few cars. Uh, we actually did this exercise about eight years ago with Project 964, which is based on the 1990 C2. Beautiful, beautiful car. And here today with me is Mr. Ed Wang. This is Ed Wang, otherwise known as Dayu Wang. And, um, <laughs> and he, He's the brainchild really behind these two builds. So I'm here with him today. We're gonna to talk about the cars a little bit. And um, you know, unfortunately these two cars are sold. So I'm sorry guys, you have to wait for the next one. We are already looking for new chassis to start a couple new builds, which will probably be introduced for sale in 2022. Um, but without further ado, let's let's get started here, man. So- Well, Jimmy, thanks for uh, having me on your show, man. It's, it's just a- it's incredible. Listen, dream. you're my first guest. Incredible eh? dream come true. Uh, so the the whole idea, like I mean, obviously Jimmy was going back at it a little bit. He he's a little bit older than me, so he's in that era. I I didn't really like 964s till till a few years ago. Um, so I had the vision for these two cars, but getting there and all that kind of stuff. I just want to say thanks to Jimmy and the guys in the shop uh, mechanically and all that kind of stuff just to get it to what uh, what the vision was. So. Um, you want to start on the, the 90, the C2? The, yeah, 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 let's do this one. So the, I, I guess like internally, we kind of gave these two cars uh, different names. This is, uh, uh, I guess, Project Track or Project RS, I guess, right? Yeah, uh, RS Tribute. Okay. Kind of like that, uh, we had that 993 RS Tribute car. I don't know if you guys seen for sale a few, few years ago or a year ago. We sold that car like three times. So I know, I know. it's... Um, um, so the whole idea was basically creating a RS clone, basically. Um, and luckily we had a, a C2 car to, to start. Um, is it, the C2s are probably a little bit more rare than, uh, than the C4 back yeah, in the day, right? I, I think that whenever you see them listed, it's probably like um, less than 30%, I think, of all, all manufactured 964 narrow body cars were, were, were C4. And you know what I mean? It's very, very hard to find a, a, a C2 coupe to be completely honest. So we really lucked out finding yeah. this car out of Vancouver, I believe. Yeah, so we, we got this car from Vancouver. The car was actually a pretty good car. It was actually being driven every single day. It, it actually didn't have this interior at the time. It was, uh, it was, a, it was a full tan interior. Yeah. Um, so we had to order a brand new interior and the whole idea was to, to be lightweight. So we, we got rid of the rear seat, got rid of the leather seats, put new Recaro, uh, new Recaro SPG, sorry. Uh, in inside radio delete uh, took out all the audio system put a roll cage in it the environment inside is completely different now oh, so I mean it's uh, it's awesome it's it's hard to believe to I mean even from our like McLaren like, business to like to you old, just go ahead fall right into this thing right no? let's set you up here let's Whoa, set you up here. yeah okay there um, we go all right my Greek hips are just fitting in you know very nice you sit very low in this yeah, thing man yeah it's and that's the whole sick. thing is is we wanted to to, to change the environment basically. So when you're inside, you know, everywhere you look from the door cards, from the seats, um, you know, steering wheel, the radio delete. Well, I like how this steering wheel off the center hub actually still comes out further with the spokes. Yeah. I find in my 964, which has that motorsport wheel, yeah. I still have to reach a little too far to yeah. grab the wheel. Yeah. And this thing is like, yeah. Like I, I feel perfect in this thing. Like yeah. this is perfect. And that's perfect one of the seating. things that we are probably going to add to our, our, our signature build from now on is to always integrate that Momo steering wheel and have the uh, custom 12 o'clock. Um, and new was actually uh, nice enough to sort of hand paint the Momo logo into the color of the car. So 
Uh, attention to detail is definitely what we're trying to go for. Um, you know, at the same time, not being a hot rod or anything like that. No, and, no. and it's just OEM plus, um, you know, and, and, and how Porsche would have maybe made it uh, back in the day. So, um, and well, they did with the RS, yeah. but uh, you know, with the wheels and all that kind of stuff. So this car actually has these really, really, um, I guess they're like kind of, they're not original, but they're kind of like 993 RS looking well, wheels right so oh yeah definitely so yeah. the uh still three, two these pieces. are a little bit more yeah. 993 i think with the with the uh yeah 993 with the concave spoke i guess yeah. but you know beautiful three piece or sorry these are two piece wheels two piece wheels yeah right um and they're from rh who are um, the company that reproduced basically all the speed line stuff that porsche was doing back yeah. in the 90s very good quality tuv approved wheels um and, and we're made in germany too they're right? made in germany yeah, yes exactly. so we exclusively so. sell that stuff yeah. Uh, through FAF tuning, and that, that's the rolling stock we had here. We're a little bit gifted, I think, when this car came. We already had these rims on it, yeah. which is sick. Yeah. And, um, and yeah, so, like it, it was, it was a nice. You know, it was nice already touch. a nice car, right? Yeah. It has KW coilovers in it. Um, we completely refinished the the brakes. Uh, we took them apart, um, painted them, um, and actually upgraded the rear ones to the four pistons, just uh, from the from the two pistons. Right. And I didn't know that actually until I got the car. In, like, in all honesty, I, don't, I, I didn't know that either. I think, yeah. I'm not sure, but I think 964.2 C2s would have four piston caliper in the rear. I'm not 100% positive, yeah. but yes, this has two, two piston calipers, which are upgraded now to C4, yeah. four piston calipers in the back. Yeah. So a lot more braking performance all the way around on the car. I really just did them because they just look a lot better. Ed's all about the looks. I'm yeah. all about the, you yeah. know, the performance. Yeah, all the performance, yes, yes. <laughs> um, so um, we have, we didn't really need to do too much on the engine. Um, the engine obviously needed work. We took it out, we resealed it, we, 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 we sort of touched it up and all that kind of stuff. Um, Let's have a look here. You know, the black, uh, the black fan is gorgeous. Yes, man. yes. So that's another detail that we're gonna continue going with our FAF Reserve build is Momo steering wheel, 12 o'clock is one of them. And then we're also gonna start, you know, painting all the fans, every yeah. single one of them. So in this particular one, we wanted to you know, there were some talks in the, in, in the shop that we were going to do it in red, but I, then I just wanted to connect the uh, the black roll cage with the black right. fans just so that it's not too much red. I right? agree. So, I also yeah. find the red fan, which I've seen on a couple cars, you know what I mean, on the internet and stuff, I, I find it to be a little bit too strong in the engine yeah. bay, to be completely yeah. honest. So the black, the gloss black paint finish on this is yeah. just, just beautiful to complement the cage and the brakes. It's just... Gorgeous. Yeah. Very, and it just nice. looks it just looks expensive. Yeah. Right. Like it just when you open the engine bay, you show your buddies, hey, look at this. For sure. Oh, cool. That's that's interesting. So um one thing that I came up with the idea to was uh was actually doing a, a, a lightweight sticker rather than the emblem because you know, just continuing with the lightweight uh RS tribute idea. Obviously it, it wasn't an option back in the day, but you know, just cool little nod to the modern day GT3 RSs and all that kind of stuff, saving I don't know, two grams of weight or something like that. So pretty cool sticker. Um, um, so that's a nice little detail that we decided to do on this car. Um, really nice. These mirrors. Oh you, yeah. You have to always do these mirrors. I think every 964 every single guy time. knows. Yeah. 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 Like it's 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 gotta happen. The arrow the arrow mirror just really really elevates the look. The the old <laughs> school flag is just man. It's a little too yeah. old school. I think. Um, what well, I'm all, all about the look, so it looks great. Obviously, Jimmy, you want to talk about the aerodynamic performance of Oh my God, so the, performance air, of the, the air hits it over here, <laughs> and then witchcraft happens, looks, and then there's like more downforce. I don't yeah. know, they're, they're really sick. I, I, they really, really look good on the car. They, they, yeah. they make it look a little bit fresher, a little bit newer. For some reason, I think with the molded bumper, and the molded uh, side skirts that the 964 specifically has, it needed this, I think, to finish it. I think the flat old flagpole uh, or, you know, flag mirrors, yeah. they just didn't execute the look. Very early 90s, how they started with the 100%. round, you know? 100%. So, so that's a must, so we, yeah. we did that. Um, moving forward from our, like, you know, the, the, the 12 o'clock signature Momo steering wheel, um, the uh, painted fan, what we decided to, you know, as we build these stuff, we, we learn more and all that kind of stuff. We decided to integrate uh, a painted air duct to all of our cars now too. So it's, I like the look. I love the look. I think it looks, it gives it a little bit more of a, 
uh, clean cleansingness of yep. uh, in the front, and obviously performance. It's it, it's a fully functional. So, so the look part has been executed. The performance part is as the car is traveling forward. Okay, <laughs> air goes in here, and then it goes through a whole bunch of stuff back here, and then exits just behind this uh, this rotor over here, <laughs> providing cooling. Yeah. So there's the performance aspect of these brake ducts, which yeah. again they look really really sick, beautifully yeah. executed. Well, a lot of guys and, just do the do the dots. Oh, yeah, you know, you know. Every time we see them come in yeah. for service yeah. and it's uh, you know makeshift job, it's usually just the uh, this piece over here. The functionality of it is quite beautiful. And I got to say, both Val and New, when they when they do these installs for us, like they do a really they, good they, job. They do gorgeous yeah. work. You know, yeah. beautiful rivets holding the uh, the plate that comes out into the wheel well. It's really, really yeah. sexy stuff. They do great, great work yeah, with yeah, that. Yeah. So that's I think that's like a must for for our cars. Hundred percent. You know, I gotta say, I've had some seat time behind the wheel of this car as we're going through our final stages. As you know, with our, our most all of our builds, we don't just like finish them and then list them for sale. They actually go through very comprehensive road tests. We wanna make sure we eke out everything. This car has a super tight interior, like everything very, very, very sturdy. There's no creaking, there's no rattles, very lightweight, but the car is actually very tight as well. And those are the types of things we really work through on both of our builds here. And we'll get into uh, our next car very shortly, but like I, I loved my time behind the wheel. And of course the rotation and the front end connection that the C2 provides, like it really is uh, a beautiful expression of classic air-cooled motoring. Yeah. And I think with just enough new that you don't feel like you're driving too old of a car. Yes. You know what I mean? Yes. Um, and I so, find 993s a little too new. Yeah. Like it doesn't feel There's old something a anymore, little bit awkward. So. I, you know, I love the upright wings of the, of the 964 and G body cars. Like it's very classic Porsche. I feel like the 993 is just a little bit flat looking in yeah. the front. Don't get yeah. me wrong. Like a beautifully slammed C4S. You know, I can't deny it's a wicked looking car, yeah. but I, I still really love the upright headlights. I kind of appreciate the very narrow body line of the car. It makes it look so small. There's yeah. nothing more beautiful than seeing a 964 on the highway, just driving along. And you know, it just looks so tiny on the road. It's re it really is beautiful. I guess we should talk about the, uh, the next one. This is, this one's the Touring. Okay, this is the Touring. This is a big deal, this car. This car took is the touring. Yes, this car took like <laughs> a one, long time, almost a one, almost yeah. one point five years to complete. To be honest, I almost quit because of this car. Uh, <laughs> there was a lot of uh, arguments, love, sweat, yeah. tears that have been put into the build of this car. So what actually originally landed at our store, I think, as a, a singer donor car. Yeah. We are a singer agent, as you guys know. Yeah. And, um, and it was gonna go in that direction. And one of our clients came by the store and he saw the car in the back. I kind of explained the fact that it's a, you know, two owner or I think three owner from new. Yeah. 83,000 it, nice, it was a nice car. Nice was, car, yeah. but neglected over the last, I would say 15 yeah. years of good, its life. Good pedigree is what they call it. Good yes. pedigree. Pedigree, that's yeah. right. <laughs> so good pedigree well, Eric, car. Eric actually, I remember him calling me He's like, dude, like this is a, it's like, a, are you sure you want to use this for singer? This was a, this was a nice car. And I'm yeah. like, ah, oh, you know, they're, you know, like they're probably, it's nice, but it's probably, you know, better need some work. So right. I went to see it and I, I, I just fell in love with the color, right? And then oh, that's yeah. when, when uh, Jason probably right. bought it and, um, yeah. So we actually ended up selling the car as it sat and we started on a build for the client. Of course, uh, like a lot of our customers, you know what I mean? Uh, uh, the car was taking a, a little bit long to execute on. Obviously, with this extensive of a build, time does matter. And uh, and he kind of grew impatient. And basically, we uh, decided to take the project yeah. back from him and say, okay, l listen, we have the expertise. We have the right people in place with an organization. Let's yeah. let's start. And, so, I, and uh, I, think, I think people don't, you know, like for me in my infancy of building uh, you know, having a vision and building a car, you think it's easy. You think it's, okay, we, we want to make, how much is it going to cost? We want to make this into this, but there's so many different moving parts. Things break. We need parts for that. We need for this. And I think that's probably why the customer was like, 
you know, like this is gonna be like a six to eight months build I and this and that, more money here and, and he decided to exit, right? So, sure. uh, and, and me learning from this, like you said, we're like butting heads all the time with doing this, we should do that, we should do this, we should not do this. And um, it, it's not easy, it's, it, it takes a long time, it's a big toll on the shop and, and uh, it's, it, to it, get it here is, is right. like, I thought it, I, at one point I didn't think it was gonna happen. You didn't happen. think it was gonna happen? Yeah, I didn't think it was I know, gonna happen. I yeah. know, we, uh, that's uh, yeah. some of the last arguments we were having about whether we were gonna able to complete. And as much as people say, oh, you know what I mean, that should have been done, you know, we're FAF tuning, we're FAF reserve, we're FAF this, whatever. Um, you know, it's not necessarily just the build of the car. It's also, again, about the butting heads on the vision of the car. How far do we go? We got to make sure that the car stays within a value sensitive area so that, you know, it, it transacts and, and, you know, at the end of the day, we're here to sell cars and make a living. So yeah. like, where is that breaking point and where are we going too far and yeah. providing something that's maybe a little bit too unique yeah. and then we're kind of priced ourselves out of the market. So that was a huge, huge, huge thing, thing for us to get right. Huge thing. Yeah. And we... uh, I think, I think we ended up perfect. We, we ended up, the car sold too, um, not immediately, but you know, within, I think the first day we probably got 20 different phone calls, just yeah. how much is it, what is it, what's the info, and then the next day somebody just took it right away. And yeah, and, and Jimmy is right, pricing it, we, we, we definitely built the car with a price in mind that no 96 were ever got. So we were already exceeding our, our budget of what a 964 should sell for, but I guess the client saw value in it and what we've done to the car. And I mean, the bill is extensive and um, he's very happy. And, and I think he's going to be very, very happy with the car. Um, so obviously the vision with this car was a touring, uh, very different from, from the RS Tribute. It's a car that you're going to drive every day. It's got leather interior. It's got radio. Um, it's got the seats in the back. Um, and obviously it's a four wheel drive car. And um, I'm really happy with the wheel selection for this car because again, as we're building these two cars, they were at one point side by side on the hoist and we swap wheels and change wheels. They're supposed to be at cup wheels and we were supposed to take this wheel and put on that. Those wheels were not available at the time. And it was, it was a huge shuffling and this and that, but I'm really happy that this wheel ended up on this car yeah. because it's just perfection, perfection. And that's one thing we learned too is picking wheels, we should keep it to the, to the last thing to do because it yeah. just so many so many things change right they, so they are like that finishing accent you know what i mean on any outfit you're putting on you know what i mean i'm sure you 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 know dress yourself and then at one point you get to to that place where you're like okay what is the finishing touch that we're going to add to this car and i think rolling stock will always be that and of course ruff's you know monoblock in this particular case you know such a classic signature look yeah. on the green i think specifically yes. works is that's something that they do yes. with their heritage um and in future builds we will um look at the wheel selection very closely on what we're going to do i think a motorsport minded uh two-piece riveted wheel on our on our rs tribute works and then of course this one piece monoblock wheel on this particular car i think also really works yeah. I, I love the wheel combination yeah but you know let's let's kind of get into the yeah, to yeah the guts sorry, of this. yeah so yeah. um um <laughs> The we, engine, what do we do there, Ed? We, we, well, the engine, obviously this car wasn't being driven. It was like, you know, when, when I saw it, it was sitting in the back of McLaren, just kind of counting the days kind of thing. Um, so the engine had to come out. Uh, we, we opened it up um, and obviously uh, we completely rebuilt the motor. New pistons, new barrels, Porsche factory. And I think Val was saying that uh, it's it's probably going to produce a little bit more power and when i did drive it it definitely did feel a little bit more for sure punctuary a little bit more uh higher torque um you know uh, i didn't go over four thousand in the braking valve so don't get mad at me <laughs> um but uh it, it's it's it definitely feels tight and val was the the master tech that that was working on this project and he just did a absolutely stunning job the guy is so particular in certain things um all the screws all the little plastic screws in the, the vents. If okay, I, like you, if I take- if You're I turning take, me on, I gotta, I gotta have a look now. <laughs> if I take the skirt off um, and you see the little plastic little clips and stuff like they're all brand new. So Val is, is, is just very good with that kind of stuff. Oh, yeah. We open the engine bay, like it's just pure jewelry. Yeah. In this particular one, we, we, we continue with our painted uh, fan. So this one, we obviously wanted to emphasize the color mm -hmm. and we did the forest screen. Yeah, beautiful. And, and my vision at the time was we wanted to emphasize the color of this car and 
um, we decided to, because the customer didn't really actually want to do anything with the paint. They wanted to just no, those, those were all it. things that we sort yeah. of took, I think, over in this particular case. I'm really glad we did it. We, oh, we oh, 100%. Really finished the color. It's a, it's a great, 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 great choice to do that. Yeah. Seeing all the, uh, you know what I mean, another thing that uh, we, we bring on some of these builds, and again, this one a little bit more extensive than our RS Tribute car. Um, all of the, um, all the, all the fasteners, all the little brackets, all the little bolts are all reason coded. So such a beautiful factory, factory, factory look. Yeah. And I think what a lot of people will always miss on when you're rebuilding a car extensively like this, when it comes to price, when it comes to an old 911, sometimes that low mileage car is great. However, it still probably needs everything that we did here. 100%. So, yeah. you know what I mean? Like yeah. you, you, you always you always find yourself in this situation, like what's actually more valuable sometimes? The yes, you know what I mean? If you have a true pedigree, very, very low mileage car, like sub 30,000 mile or something like that, you know, yes, beautiful car. But if it hasn't been looked after, you're really getting into paying the premium for that car, plus then paying the premium on top to bring it to this level. And that's kind of where that, you know, that yeah. game kind of starts. And I think this is where a lot of the stuff that was happening between Ed and I during this entire build, I gotta say it was, it was stressed, to, it was stressed pretty good at times. Yeah. Um, but, <laughs> but. No, because the price just kept going, going up, up and up and up and up, yeah. right? So, um, and you know, and, and obviously it, it is, like the car looks expensive, right? Yeah. Like, I mean, you, if, you, if you just step back and look at every single detail, like the brakes, the wheels, wherever, you kneel down, look underneath, you know, look at the front air duct, everything about it is just, it's an expensive looking car. So um, with me, like, you know, obviously not coming from a, you know, a service background and all that kind of stuff, you know, with sales, I, a lot of it is just how it looks and how, what it means to me. And for me, when I told Jimmy the price that we're gonna ask, he was like, well, that's probably gonna be the most expensive 964 ever sold. And I said, well, the car looks like it. So. And luckily it, it sold right away and, and somebody saw what I saw and, and sure enough, it, uh, it the, the stars are aligned for this one, so. Yeah, listen, the belief system is really uh, very important, I think, when you're, you're, you're putting your heart and soul into something like this. You know, just opening the door and looking through this beautiful interior, and I believe these are uh, factory original Speedster buckets, is that correct? Or? Um, they're, they're RS, bucket seats, so basically Recaro yes. uh, pole positions. Right. Um, and um, and I had I came up with this uh, 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 vision is basically, I really wanted to look this look at the car in when it's sunny in the back of the car and have the sun shine into the interior, showing the tan interior and be able to connect the paint and also the, the seat back at the same time. So we decided to paint the seat back in the forest green as well and re completely re the front seat into the tan interior. So the seat actually was black painted seat back and also it had um, a black leather. So it was it didn't look like this at all. So we that was a learning experience there. That was quite expensive to, yeah, to do. But, but beautiful but, custom work. You but but, I mean? like, but just beautiful, beautiful, completely gorgeous. And um, um, you know, that was, a, that was a really, really nice touch. Obviously our Momo steering wheel uh, finish that we wanted to, to keep to keep going with that. Um, we're able to do the custom 12 o'clock on this one as well to just continue with the, the tan interior. Um, and obviously this one is a touring, so it has mm. the Porsche Classic radio, uh, it has a full sound system. Um, and this car's tight too. I mean, like, you know, you expect a car that's, you know, over 30 years old to make squeaks and this and that and having set, sat there for how many years you don't know and have it finish and not make a single sound is just incredible and what we want to do is basically oem plus uh and and more importantly a turnkey car like we expect this car if it's properly serviced and stuff like that to do over 100 another hundred thousand kilometers no mm -hmm. problem mm -hmm. like the engine and all that kind of stuff so um i really really love the uh environment in here it's uh it's pretty, pretty sick. So kind of same feeling as the red car. I'm not sitting as low, so I feel like I got a little bit better visibility. Yeah. Again, the steering wheel, kind of the, the, the spokes of the steering wheel yeah. protruding outwards. I feel like I got a nice, nice feel at like nine and nine and three o'clock. Yeah. You know, the beautifully finished, new finished, you know, tan shifter. Yeah. Um, 
like really beautiful. The Porsche Classic radio, I have in, which I have in my personal 89 C4, it's a must have. It is absolutely amazing. Just brings you to the new world yeah. in terms of Bluetooth technology and stuff. Um, so you can enjoy your classic car, but you know, you can kind of use it as often as you want at the same time. You know what yeah, I mean? I it's mean, not, it doesn't have to be just a weekend car. It could be a during the week yeah. car and take calls and, 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 and Porsche is just, you know, like, obviously I, I drive a 964 as well. And I love Porsches. We, our business is predominantly Porsche, Ferrari, but mostly, uh, Porsche and it's good on Porsche to, to continue with that kind of classic radio and have oh, yeah. parts and, you know, you can build these just kind of things thing. and keep going. Like you, you would never be able to do it with this model year Ferrari. Like there's just no way that you will be able to to build something, you could restore it, but it's not gonna be something that you could drive like kind of every day kind of thing. Yeah, so. I think it's kind of interesting how 964s, not even turbos really, but just regular ones have kind of eclipsed uh, almost all Ferrari of the same vintage, like really, yeah. you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. So if you were to compare this 1990 or 89 C4 to let's say a 1993 TB, like man, it's yeah. like, it's like 100% more, actually. 100% you know more, I mean? exactly, um, yeah. So pretty incredible how I think uh, through the uh, modern classic era, Porsche has surpassed Ferrari in quite a few aspects. With the exception of their like super limited elite cars, right. like their offerings, which were really more comparison to a 911 Turbo versus a, a C4 or a C2 like this one, like it's completely gone upside yeah. down. Um, yeah. And I think after you drive both cars, we have extensive, uh, you know, time behind the wheel of the 355, 348 and that generation Ferrari. And there's really something about them that although they're cool and they sound wicked and they, they look sick, it doesn't really deliver in terms of performance. You know yeah. what I mean? The engine sings, it's got a nice pull, but when you turn into a corner, there's this like unsettling feeling of how the car tracks and, yeah. and it just doesn't have that solid to the ground Porsche feel. You know what I mean? I, I, 100%. It's really, really something only these guys know how to yeah. do. Yeah, I agree. And you know what they say, Porsche being um, an investment and I mean, it really is, you know, they like, how, how much was this car, you know, new? Like it was. Uh, I think I, it was less than what we sold it for right now. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know? I mean, it's, I think this car was probably around 100,000 Canadian, maybe a little bit under that. And I think a 964 Turbo at the same time would have been around 135, 140,000 Canadian, if I remember. Yeah. Yeah. I'm kind of just trying to remember right now, but I think somewhere along those lines. And, um, you know, a lot of people argue 964 is the car that almost bankrupt the company, really. Um, and uh, I think that was because this car from a technology standpoint, not necessarily drive line and, 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 and powertrain wise, but more so just the interior starting to get a little old looking, you know, E36 was just coming out. That was a fresh new look inside and not to compare it to a BMW, but in that same, you know, amongst their peers, they started to fall a little right, bit behind. Right, right, right. And the that's 993, I think was a, a kind of a knee jerk reaction, yeah. I guess, car, you know what I mean? Yeah, Before the uh, water cooled stuff came. Yeah. This is gorgeous in here. Yeah, yeah, we, we, we finished, uh, um, you know, we, we obviously we wanted to just make sure every single point is touched and not have the whole car being beautiful. And then you open up the engine compartment or you open up the front trunk and then it's, it's all messed up or whatever. So we, we got uh, new strut bars for the front and also brand new carpeting for the entire, entire uh, front trunk there. I've never looked in the 964's front boot and seen See, anything this, that looks clean, this yeah. clean it's always like messed ever up. in my life yeah um they're always just a even in the nicest car they're absolutely yeah. the worst thing to look at they yeah. just look all the carpets are defeated and sagging just like a you know what i mean <laughs> Uh, an old person's face, you know what I mean? I, <laughs> yeah, I don't really even yeah. know how to explain it. Just, you never want to open that thing up. Yeah. The only other sexy front boot on the 964 is from Bad Boys when he had all those custom holders for all those guns and stuff like that in that last right, scene. Right, right, right. Right, okay? Right. That's the only time, it other, only other time it looks sick. But that, just this part here is enough for me to just fall in love with this car. Yeah. It's yeah. just beautiful. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, it doesn't really do it justice, I think, here under the, in our studio lights. But like outside, this forest green color with the tan, it's just electrifying. It's just so yeah. vibrant and yeah. beautiful. Um, I'm really, really, really excited for the new owner to, you know, put some mileage on it, enjoy it. 
through some of our shows that we do this summer, we'll yeah. definitely call it back out to, to have it so you guys can have a closer look. Yeah. Um, another really neat thing that both of these cars received was our new ice blasting process. Oh, right, yes. That was, uh, you know, obviously we, Coming from sales, you know, Jimmy's like, "Oh, you, this is this is the next this is the next thing," and and it was really really expensive. And I was, I was being the the guy that was like, "No, no, this is too expensive." But after getting the machine, getting them done, I, I'm a firm believer, and um, it, it was it was incredible. It was like yeah, it, it was like almost like it. It, it was a brand new car. Yeah, yeah. The the, ele the elevation of the uh, you know when you're doing an extensive build like this. You, you really do want to make sure that you've touched every aspect of the car. Yeah. And I think that's what we, we owe our customers when we're building cars like this, is to give them everything. So this is the type of car that you put into your garage, you throw it on the lift, yeah. and you are completely, you're waiting for the opportunity for your friends to come over so you can show them the underbody yeah. of the car. That's how beautiful the underbody of this car and this car is today. Absolutely, everything spotless clean. The factory Cosmoline, which as we know has been a great thing to, to sort of contain and, and preserve everything. But now these cars are driven very sparingly, you know what I mean? So we're able to fully, fully clean these. And we also offer to re -Cosmoline them as another protective layer and all fresh. When you look at this car up in the air, it looks brand new. Brand new, yeah. Brand new. Brand new. Absolutely, beautiful process. Um, it's worked out really great. Yeah. I think we're sold out to almost the end of summer in terms of getting cars done now, nice. which is great. And uh, yeah, these two cars both receive that, which is sick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and that's the thing is like, we don't really need to do that, right? Like, I mean, you know, at the end of the day, we could present a build of a beautiful car and then, you know, underneath nobody really sees, but we just decided that every single little point that needs to be touched and uh, and uh, it's been uh, it's been positive. Like I mean, we have another. We're, we're frantically trying to buy more uh, chassis, so um, I think uh, we have about working on one or two of them coming in, um, and and we can't wait to build another one, the yeah. next one, right? Yeah. We have a donor in the back that uh, we're just kind of uh, uh, working out a little bit of a detail for a customer that kind of missed out on this car, and uh, we, we we started something great here. I mean, it's it was just something that we kind of wanted to do it personally because we love 964s and it's kind of fun and for the shop to have something to work on in the winter time and all that kind of stuff and then it became something so mm -hmm. we definitely sparked something really interesting and uh, you know so I'm pretty excited pretty excited for uh, yeah the pre pretty eager to see where it goes uh, yeah. yeah like I touched on we, uh, we had a, uh, a gentleman in the US who was really really hot on this particular car he, he missed out on it so we're in the middle of quoting a, a new build on one remaining chassis that we have left and of course, uh, if you're watching this video and you're in the Toronto area or wherever you are, if you got a 964, you're you're, you're feeling like your your time is done with, then please let us know, and we'd be happy to discuss buying it. Um, yeah, so you know, Ed, I gotta say, you you took this project on from the from the get go, man. You did a great great job. I'm super happy to see what you were able to execute on here. Amazing performance to have them both finished and sold so quickly. And yeah. um, you know, I really look forward to. Uh, to seeing more of yeah, what man. you got, man. Thank you. This is Thank really, you. really wicked. Yeah, it, I mean, it's, uh, it's a, just our shop too, right? Like, I mean, just to give a good shout out to Eric and, uh, you know, New and Val and those guys, like they're just, I wouldn't be able to do this comfortably and buy in a car and go, I want this to look like this, not knowing that I have the support of Jimmy, the technical support of, you know, the guys in the shop and, and being able to complete something like this. So it was a team effort. Um, and uh, it's too bad they, like, I mean, it's good that they sold, but like, it's too bad that they sold so quickly. I think they're both guys who will let us use them, don't we? Yeah, you yeah, know? yeah. So, so I think that's that's pretty awesome. We have a great, great, great clique of customers that really, really support us in that way. And, you know, it's not just about selling cars, it's about the culture of what we live in every day. And, 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 and we love it and we want to preserve it and, and just be involved all the time. Um, so I guess in closing, uh, you know, thanks so much for tuning in again for another episode, guys. This has been really, really fun. Um, and uh, we look forward to the next episode. So uh, keep on clicking that subscribe button and uh, we'll talk soon. Be good.